man it's it's going to be so exciting i mean it's going to be it's such a rad event anyway i've been to it so many times and it's just uh i mean it it's just all about having fun that's what that's why we live the way we live i mean since i've been to the world in uk it's been nearly 30 years and for me I mean, you know, it was, I was a young kid coming, uh, growing up in a very passionate sport. The, uh, the community was just really tight. And, um, and then just going what I felt like all the way across the uh, other side of the world and to run into the same passionate people that have, that are so rad and just have a definite, totally different definition of style and contributed so much to uh, my imagination. My head was just blown. I was, I was just so excited to come back and just to learn so much new things and, um, and just take what they contributed uh, back to my imagination, see what came of it. And that's what I guess, you know, that was the start of, that's 30 years. So you can, you can see it, it's plenty of uh, inspiration. I grew up injuring myself, so, uh, I mean, how do I feel now? I probably feel uh, like a wreck if anybody else had to experience my body, but, I mean, this is the way I live, and uh, it's, so I'm pretty used to it, I guess. So, I mean, I, and riding bikes, I mean, that's just who I am. That's what I am. That's, uh, that's, uh, I could, I don't think I could ever stop. So, I, uh, yeah, I'm still riding. I mean, it's still, uh, maybe not as, well, I don't know, I ride, I try to ride every day if the weather allows me to, but, um, but also my body gets wrecked pretty easy so you know I have a little layoffs here and there but I, I still ride I'm mean, basically right here this is my my backyard I've kind of I've kind of come full circle with my riding it's like uh, this is my zen this is kind of my meditation spot this is where I can ride and I have no other distraction but the moment and my bike and um, that's what it's about for me right now is just to um, just to remember what it's really about it's a it's about my heart and my soul and and uh, this is just fuel for it right here so I this is where I I play nowadays and um, and I kind of keep try to keep it true to that because you know I'm lucky enough to have been all over the world and traveled and done contests and shows and um, and now I just uh, I just remembering what it's really about it's about uh, you know inner peace and um, and just challenging yourself you know just it's a personal contest between you and uh, uh, you and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what here is. This is this is my sanctuary right here. Huh, and the one moment that stands out in my career is is really um it's it's about the UK. I mean I I did I had in my mind I wanted to do a backflip twist, you know, now known as a flare. And so Mansfield, UK, there's a contest out there and I was writing it and um, I had the, the motivation that I really needed to make that happen and that was I had a, a guy from uh, a kid from Make-A-Wish come and wanted to see me ride and I'm like you know I really want to give this guy something really special uh, I thought you know I guess today's the day I'm gonna do a flip flip twist I'm either I remember looking at myself in the mirror right before I went out to the uh, right my time went out and did the show and I was just like you know I'm gonna give everything I have for this boy and either I'm pulling it or I'm going to the hospital it's the name of the game so I <laughs> just sometimes you got to commit I mean just you have to look at both sides so that you're completely committed so I, I went out there and just gave everything I did did 900s did big fives did uh um and then just did a flip and uh kind of jacked up my ribs but I'm like before the pain sets in I'm gonna I'm gonna do a flare so uh so I did a flare I um, went off the side of the ramp and just rode right up to him and gave my bike say this is you this is for you this is this day's for you and uh um man i still cherish that moment i was in uh canada i was at the two hip contest and it was the first time i ever did a 900 i had it in my mind many many times and i was just like man i'm i'm gonna throw it down here so throw it down and rode out of it you know you never know the game if you're going to ride out and so as, as much as a surprise to me it probably was to anybody else but uh the tv was there espn was there and uh, they went up to brian blyther and they're like hey wh what's that guy's name and blyther's like uh that's the condor <laughs> and uh so they just called me Condor during the whole TV um, show. And uh, yeah, and he, he called me Condor because he gave me that nickname on the Swatch Impact Tour. Um, 
and I guess it's just because I, I like to go high and I like to fly. So after that, after that ran, after that uh, ESPN show ran of me doing the 900 and everybody calling me Condor, I never li lived it down, so, but I'm proud of it. I like to fly, I still like to fly. Man, you know, of course. Uh, yeah, it's very tragic. You know, it's it's been very tough um, to deal with this. But but yeah, uh, special moments. I mean, Dave. Dave was a miracle boy that became the miracle man. I mean, he just uh, he just had a certain finesse to BMX and riding that nobody will ever have. I mean, he just. Uh, he just showed the possibilities were on a whole nother level than anybody was dreaming of. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, we we spend a lot of time and we're, we're on the road together a lot. And uh, I mean, yeah, I I just saw him ride and I was just like, man, all right. Well, uh, I mean, I've said this before, but I was like, these are the days I get used to taking second because <laughs> because uh, he he just. Uh, he just had that power and just uh, that finesse. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I can't say enough about Dave, and uh, we're, he'll forever be missed, and we all love him, and we all appreciate what he contributed to our sport, and uh, we'll take that, and we're, we're just keep evolving with, uh, you know, so... When I first came over to England, I saw um, Craig Campbell doing peg stalls. It was so rad because no one had thought of that. And so uh, when I came back home, I just started kind of doing it on on the ramp and kind of trying to figure out like like Craig. And then Steve started Steve Swope started grinding them, and um, and it was kind of a uh, a time that. Uh, skateboard street was really progressing and so people were doing handrails and just redefining what the playground was around you and uh, and just turned street into a paradigm shift of reality and I just uh, uh, started seeing handrails and I think the first couple ones are I mean I did they're really steep and uh, everybody thought man why why am I going for such hard ones in the beginning but at the time I, I had bad shoulder injuries and I just couldn't hop up big rails and so uh it was really i was going those big rails because i could i could kind of i didn't have to hop so high so really to my in my mind it was a lot easier <laughs> and um and you get done with a lot quicker no it, it, but it handrails are i i i define handrails kind of like base jumping it's like total commitment it's all or nothing you either pull it or um someone's probably waking you up <laughs> uh yeah so first experience you know you just you just roll up to it and you just commit and you go for it and when you roll away that's what bmx is it's making the impossible possible <laughs> yeah that was a power paraglider I, uh, in 2008 um i kind of dreamed up something that i thought would be the raddest thing ever um, but I probably was the only, I was probably the only person that thought it was the raddest thing ever, but it's like when you can, we combine two passions into one, that's pretty rad. So, uh, I shipped my paramotor out there, um, power paraglider and, uh, flew in, landed by the half pipe, got my, uh, bike and started the show. <laughs> I was so stoked. That was so fun. But yeah, I, I, I still skydive. I started skydiving 26, seven years ago, um, when I was like 16. I skydive pretty much every week. I mean, I, I, I love. I mean, I don't base jump as much. I mean, I do. I love combining, you know, riding my bike off the side of a mountain. That was pretty rad because um, it was just something that I thought was impossible, and then you just make it possible. And I rode my bike out of the back of a plane, sky van at about sixteen thousand feet. That was amazing experience. I jump out of balloons and I because it, it's kind of a safe base jump it's kind of like base jumping but it's a lot safer and I um, I've been flying wingsuits a lot that's what I've been loving and also uh, speed flying speed flying is pretty amazing speed flying is like uh, um, these smaller canopies that you uh, 
you fly down mountains. It's kind of like proximity wing fly, wingsuit flying, but it's uh, under canopy. But they uh, maybe don't go as quite as fast. But it's just it's an, it's like this eternal zip line that that you can <laughs> you you can experience and the ride anywhere. It's it's amazing. So yeah, I don't know if you guys like to fly. If anybody out there listening likes to fly, that's a good one. But uh, yeah, so I I still I still fly. I mean, I used to fly helicopters, but got too expensive for me, so uh, I had to lose uh, that addiction. But um, hey, if you guys have helicopters at the uh, um, NAS, I'll I'll jump out and land on the half pipe. That'll be fun. <laughs> I can't wait. This is going to be so rad. I mean, it, it, I mean, we should use rad as an acronym. It's going to be rock and destroy and ride and destroy. <laughs> Combined, married at NAS. It's going to be awesome. The best of our worlds all, all colliding. It's going to be so fun. So I can't wait. Can't wait to see you guys there. And uh, peace out. See you in July.